All right, let's talk about some exciting research for those of you who want to reduce your risk of developing diabetes, or if you already have type 2 diabetes and you want to figure out some optimal strategies. So we're going to be discussing today a groundbreaking study that was just published in the journal Nature Medicine that reveals the benefits of combining intermittent fasting with early time-restricted eating. So let's dive in. Welcome back to Self Principle, everyone. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And of course, on this channel, we discuss all things related to nutrition and my favorite, kidney health. Today, we're going to discuss the study that involves 209 participants, and these participants were randomized into three groups. The first group followed what we can call a novel type of intermittent fasting approach plus an early time-restricted eating approach. So what they basically did here was they consumed 30% of their energy requirements between 8 a.m. to noon, followed by a 20-hour fasting period on three non-consecutive days, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This is important to understand because if you only did that every single day, you can actually create all sorts of nutrient deficiencies. But doing it in this manner allows you to still have other days where you're able to eat a regular diet and still get results. Now, the second group, they followed a calorie restriction plan. Essentially, they consumed 70% of their total energy requirements and had no specific instructions on meal timing. Finally, the third group received received just standard weight loss advice. All right, so what did they find? The study results are quite fascinating. At the six-month mark, the time-restricted eating group, which also had the intermittent fasting, what they saw was they had the greatest improvements in glucose control compared to the calorie restriction group. However, the issue with the study was that when they kept following these patients, the benefits of intermittent fasting with this time-restricted eating approach, they didn't persist and less than half of the participants were still following this type of eating pattern at 18 months. Versus when they looked at the calorie restriction arm, 80% of those were still following calorie restriction at 18 months. It's important to understand that the folks that were able to stick to the intermittent fasting with the time-restricted eating, they saw improvements in their cardiovascular markers, they saw improvements in body composition, and these were much greater than those that were just following the standard weight loss advice. Well, the only big issue with the study was that most people weren't able to stick with it. Now, what about adverse events or side effects of the diet? Now, with any type of lifestyle change diet, there's always going to be some sort of adjustment and some sort of side effects. Fatigue tended to be the most commonly reported side effect in the intermittent time-restricted eating group compared to calorie restriction and the standard care groups. Constipation and headaches were also reported in both calorie restriction and the intermittent fasting with time-restricted eating group. Both of these side effects, the constipation, the fatigue, were generally mild and they didn't last very long. So what's the bottom line here and what can you apply to your own life? First, this is one of the largest studies we have and the longest study we have on this very novel approach, which is taking intermittent fasting and combining with, with time-restricted eating using a circadian type rhythm. In other words, doing it earlier in the day while the sun is out, matching our biological clocks. And it's showing that if if you're able to stick to it, there's a lot of improvements in how much sugar is floating around your blood and overall reduction in the risk of type 2 diabetes. Even though they weren't able to see these benefits long term, meaning around 18 months or so, the benefits kind of dissipated. And part of that was there was a significant dropout rate. The important thing to understand is as we talk about fast, fasting is important, but to make fasting better, you want to add the next component, which is to tie it to your circadian rhythm by doing it earlier in the day rather than later. So if you're thinking about doing this type of diet, one, you want to make sure that if you're on insulin, this would not work for you because of the highs and lows of sugars. But if you're somebody who's early in your type 2 diabetes or you're at risk for it, something like this can actually help. And if you're able to make it more sustainable, this could be a long-term strategy that you can use to reduce your risk. All right, guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And if you got questions or if you're trying to do this in your own life, I would love to hear your comments below. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time.